Hi, I'm Margo Sorum with Yoga Therapist of Alaska. And ASD teachers, we're gonna go through back bending today. And as we mentioned before, one of the major benefits of yoga is the back bend. But the thing that wants to be considered again is healthy back bends. And there's a lot of different thoughts going on in the yoga community about how to do a good back bend. And some people say you can have to contract your glutes, must contract your glutes, must contract your glutes to have a good back bend. And some people say you have to release your glutes, release your glutes, release your glutes to have a good back bend. So I'm going to share my understanding of this and say that when we do back bends supine, we want to use our glutes. When we do back bends prone, we want to maybe consider relaxing the glutes and using the spine and the arms a little bit more to do the work. And then when we go up into our other poses, we have this awareness to navigate the back bends in the way that is healthiest for us. So let's get started. And we'll start with our Div Padapitam, the two-footed back bend. This is also known as Setu Bandha, Sarvangasana. Um, and it also is known as the bridge rolls. So there's lots of ways we can do these bridge rolls, but we're with the feet close enough to the hips that we do get the leverage to lift the hips. The quads are engaged, my glutes are engaged, they're lifting me. So these large muscles are doing the back bend and the large muscles stay engaged to bring me down. Now we can start to play with the angles of your arms and it will start to enhance what you feel in the chest and in the upper back in this back bend. So our arms make a big difference in how we're going to do this back bend. So one of my favorite ways to prepare for a back bend is to bring the arms into this position and pull in and just practice the bridge rolls with your arm like so. We're not going to do this back bend right away because you warm up first, but we're just starting to kind of get this little bit of a warm up and finding the position in the shoulders and in the back that's going to make sense for this back bend. Another adaptation that I like of this Div Padapitam is the arms to be at an angel wing position. Inhale and go up. Straighten the arms, pronate the, sh the hands and roll down and stretch across the chest and shoulders. At the bottom, you supinate, external rotate, straighten, pronate and come down. So on the way up, the hands are up. On the way down, the hands are down. And we're starting to warm up this chest and upper back for back bending. My other favorite back bend is with a bolster and a block. Sorry, got to bring my props into the picture. And this is such an important thing to do if you've been at the computer all day or you've been sitting in a chair all day at school. You put the bolster right at the rib cage. You put the block behind the head. You could also have a blanket. And then you let the arms come out. We want the ribs to stay down. So if they pop when your legs go out, just keep them bent. I prefer to keep them bent because I need the extra stability to keep this organized. Already here, we're doing a lovely back bend, and it's enough for a lot of us. And just breathe. And then the elbows come up off the floor, and this is the hard part. It's almost like you need to engage a fly. Open up the pectorals by leaning with the elbows. And then we do a little bit of movement in this 180 degree span and start to stretch the chest more. And we rest down at an angle that feels good. Another way to prepare the shoulders is bring the palms together, adduct, and go overhead and back down. Keep the spine nice and organized as you do this so you truly are doing a back bend. Another movement to warm up would be this scissoring action and maybe even turning it into windmills. I will turn it around. And alternate the cross on top. And then rest. I'm gonna chug my feet up and down a little bit. 
and you can see that it does drag my spine along the bolster a bit. Feels fantastic. It's fantastic. <sighs> so these are a couple of just nice reclined back bends. <clears throat> and then we're going to work with some prone back bends. Prone back bends are on the belly. And it's my understanding that these are the most strengthening back bends that we can be doing for our backs, the most preventative back bends we can be doing. There is an amazing resource called the McKenzie Method, and it is used to prevent disc injuries and issues, and it has prevented hundreds of thousands of people from requiring surgeries from bulging discs. So this is the protocol used. And it is best taught by a McKinsey um, instructor. Um, I've worked with this method a lot and will teach you um, what I know about this. And again, I do these preventatively pretty much every day. They're also going to really strengthen your arms and your upper body. You're gonna have to practice relaxing your glutes. So we'll come to the belly and rest. Put your hands on your glutes and jiggle them. Move your hands up and down, jiggling your back and even jiggling the hamstring origins. And then just relax and see if things can relax more. Keep the glutes relaxed and slide the hands along the floor. Use your back and come up into Sphinx pose. So you're up on your elbows. Now this is the key move. My glutes are relaxed. I kiss my belly button down to the floor. There's an anterior tilt to my pelvis, so my pelvis is tilting forward and pressing into the ground. And it's going to make a distinct contraction at the sacrum and the lumbar spine. It's called the S1 L5 connection. And we wanna contract there. And at first it might feel scary, especially if you have an injured low back this feels sensational. It is gonna help reestablish that anterior pelvis and that right fit of the sacrum and the lumbar spine, which has been bulging. So it's going to definitely feel a little compressed and a little contracted. But that's what we're doing. We're compressing the vertebra a little bit when we do a back bend to strengthen that anti-fragile idea. So I'm hanging here for a while and I'm just contracting. One of my favorite movement educators is Katie Bowman, and she um, writes a lot of books. And so she types and writes her books in this position. If you watch TV, you can watch TV, but you're contracting your back and you have to have a little attention there. For a while, this might be the move. You just come up into Sphinx. You maybe change the angle of your forearms. You maybe change the angle of your legs and you push the belly and the sacrum into the floor and contract the back. And you get used to the sensation of doing this. And as you notice, I'm not just rushing through poses. You stay here. You work out your back and condition it. And then once we've acquired some knowledge of what that feels like safely, your chin comes to the floor and you're contracting your neck. Your hands come next to your ribs and you push into the hands and you use your back, your back, your back. If you can use your arms to come up higher, you do. And I'm relaxed in my back. Sorry, I'm relaxed in my glutes and very contracted in my back. And I feel it in the bones. And it looks like a pretty extreme back bend because it is. And then I use my spinal muscles and I use my arms. I relax my glutes to come down. I might change the opening of my legs and I might change the use of my arms. And that way when I come up again, I hang. Notice my shoulders are shrugged up towards my ears. The spine is hanging like on a coat rack and you are compressing and strengthening the bone the discs, and the muscles around the spine. And then we slowly come back down. 
And you would do this several times to condition the spine. And I'm teaching this back bend before I teach the other prone variations because I feel that this is extremely therapeutic movement and it's training how to strength train the spine. Then we're going to do some Bhujangasana variations. So just watch. Your face is going to be turned one way. As you inhale, you back the head up. Remember, don't yank your head up. Back it up. Back the arms up. Back the legs up. Now, as soon as the legs come off the floor, the glutes are going to become involved. That's the extra back extension. We can practice these back bends here. If you can maintain good posture, you can add the extra weight of your arms in front and work the back bend here. A nice way to work is contralateral work. So I'll take you through that. Inhale, your left leg comes up, your right arm comes forward, salute. Exhale, turn away. Inhale, right leg goes up, left leg salutes, go away. And you kind of do this contralateral work with your spine, strength training it. You can do symmetric variations and holding. You can do this with the arms in lots of different positions. And one of my favorite ones is Vimanasana. Vimanasana, the hands are on the low back. Your forehead is to the floor. Elbows go up, engage your upper back. Inhale, the legs lift and go wide, the arms go wide. Exhale, the feet come together, the arms come together. And you continue to open and close. And rest. All right, flip onto your back. We'll do just a few more back bends to um, strengthen the sacrum and the low back. This variation, your legs are all the way together, ankles touching, thighs touching. Inhale, go up, and only go as high as you can, keeping the legs together, hands pressed down and come down. And you're gonna just do this several times up and down. Knees are together. Then separate the feet your normal distance apart and go up, and you'll notice we'll get to go a little bit higher. And then you separate your feet a lot and you let them go up and you'll be up and higher still. Now, when we're starting to prepare for the full back bend, we want the feet here and we don't wanna to do too much wonking in or out. When we use the hand position, we do not want the elbows to wonk in or out. So everything becomes stable and you come up into your bridge roll you come up into the back bend. You bend your elbows in to come down and lower. And usually you repeat that three times. Magic number. And then you get to rest. Chug a little bit. Twists can be a little bit of a nice way also to unwind a back bend. So maybe a little gentle twist when you're done. Those are some of the underlying principles for healthy back bending and for using the back bend in your daily life. Namaste.